on the cards for you. Man, I love living in a pro marijuana site where it's illegal. You get these jars. Can't smoke it in the apartment. This building is like 110 years old. There are neighbors here that smoke pot, but I'm not going to snitch them out because I'm not going to snitch them out. <laughs> Keep your cancel culture to your shit self. That's what I mean. There's like so many Christians out there that are part of this cancel culture. And it's mostly Christians because most population is religious. And most population is Christians. The United fucking States, United States of Stan, where most people are Christians. And Christians, every Christian that I've met has always been some sort of like person that's got to get up in everybody's business. Is that what Jesus would do? Do you wonder why I'm an atheist? Maybe it's the behavior of Christians and the religious. Like we gotta call everybody else out. Man, that's a dangerous thing about religion. It's like you think that everything you do is gonna be forgiven because you believe in Jesus. Well, no. Because the gospel said that you have to follow the Ten Commandments, and the gospels were the word of Jesus. I don't know what you're smoking, probably meth or crack, to think that I have a black heart. Do I sound like a dude that has a black heart? How many times have I pointed out my foibles to you? How many times have you pointed out your foibles to everybody else? Have you ever pointed out any faults of yourself to others? You haven't. Don't you think that makes you a narcissist? Why is it the atheists know the Bible more than Christians do? Yo, chick, why are you talking to me offline if you got a boyfriend or a husband? Why can't you just leave me the fuck alone? Am I buying something from you? Are you in a store? Did I go to your restaurant? And why the fuck you gotta bother me? I know you know that I'm just gonna start macking on you and hitting on you. Why you gotta put me in an awkward situation? That's rude. Don't put me in an awkward situation. Oh, you're a big time fan. Uh-huh. Yeah. Subscribe to me on Patreon. Otherwise, I'm not buying your shit. Because I got one Patreon subscriber right now. But if you gotta, like, come up and, like, talk to me like you think that I'm gonna be all goo-goo-eyed over the fact that I have a fan out there, but you're not a subscriber on Patreon, you're a joke. You're trolling me. You're... You're, you have a boyfriend. Why the fuck are you talking to me? Did I get $15 from you this month? Then go the fuck away. Are you trying to date me? Well, then let's talk. No? You're just a friend on Facebook or whatever? Fine, whatever, I don't care. I know you're not in Spokane because I don't talk to people in Spokane on Facebook. So you're a bunch of trolls and assholes towards me. Or you're neglect me. If you don't, if you're cool to me, and then we can date, or you can be my wingman, dude. Fine, then we can talk, we can have a conversation. Otherwise, I'm just going to be alone because I don't fucking care enough to hate you or love you. I'm ambivalent. I, I'm indifferent. It, it doesn't matter to me. Why the fuck are you talking to me? Where's that $15? Do you got a boyfriend? Then why the fuck are you talking to me? You got a husband? Why the fuck are you talking to me? Move along now. I'm not here to waste my time. Why would I hang out with you if you're just going to run to any other man? I don't really see the point. You're a chick and I want you. But you want me to hang out with you just to be your friend. I got better things to do with my time, sweetheart. I'm not here to just watch you run to any other dude. If you're going to do that, do that. But don't expect me to be your friend or to hang out with you while you're going to do that. You fucking think I am. Crazy? I mean, if I, if I go to a bar or I go out in public and I drink my drink 
you know me well enough around Spokane to know that I'm just going to watch and you know, drink my drink and watch as you all go to some other guy but me and uh, at least I'm drunk and can handle it or at least I won't be around you for very long. The most I try to be around anybody is like an hour because one, you either just run your fucking mouth, uh, two, you're ungrateful, three, you talk shit, four, you're violent, five, you're hostile, six, you're not presenting yourself to be my girlfriend material in some way, which is usually you talking about how you love some other dude and not me, and I'm not interested. I don't care if you love some other dude, but if you don't love me enough to date me, why the fuck would I want to hang out with you? To have my time wasted? Makes no sense to me. You already know the stuff that I talk about, because... Your guy friends would have been my guy friends too and they would have helped us hook up and they would have shipped the relationship and they would have introduced us to each other. But since you're not doing that, I don't like you. Since you're just running your fucking mouths and being an ungrateful and greedy and spite-filled towards me and showing me the bitterness that I'm showing you right now, which usually isn't me anyway. You know me. You see me walking around out there all the time. Do I cause a disturbance? Do I fuck up your life? No. You fuck up mine? Pretty much. Does your existence? No. If you, like, keep yourself and I don't have to deal with it, fine. Whatever. Fuck who you want. Do whatever the fuck you want. I'm not a hater. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to kill you. I'm just going to look at you and go, well, whatever, in my head, because I know that there's 200,000 women in this town. Well, like 100,000. Maybe 80,000 if you exclude the kids. Maybe there's like, maybe there's like 50,000 women in this town that are the women that I would want to date. Just based on 18 to 24 and nice enough to me to date me. That's 50,000 chances. Why the fuck would I destroy my chances by hurting any one of you? I look at you like you're willfully ignorant, or you're just flat out stupid, and to me it's just entertaining to watch your relationships blow up and restart as you do the same fucking things over again like a bunch of insane maniacs. Or money-worshipping classes. To me, that's entertainment. Because I'm looking at you going, you guys are stupid. Because I know that I'm worthy enough. And I know that I'm good enough for you. And I know that you have to stop pussyfooting around the points. And stop being some kind of hater towards me. And that's not on me. That's on you to change. It is not on me. If you're there already, send me a video, send me evidence that you love me through video form. Mark it unlisted if you want. But if you don't do that, you're just, I'm walking through this tactile hologram going, fucking hell. Craziness. Sometimes I get a shot of DMT through my brain because I realize what a crazy ass world this is with all the fucking people around. And it's just like, vroom. And I feel like I light up in light for a second, like I just got hit with the brain chemical. The mall was packed. Do I really care what any of you do? do, do does anybody care what a bunch of kittens do or a bunch of puppies? No, nah, you're just cute distractions at this point. Are we having a conversation? Then to me, you're a human being. Other than that, you're just a tactile hologram, and I don't give a fucking shit. Do whatever the fuck you do. But if you come up with me to disrespect, you're going to get disrespect in return. That's just how it is. I don't know you. You don't know me well enough to give me disrespect. We've never met. If we have, and you still hold a grudge 
enough to come up to me and give me disrespect, I'll just call the cops, because fuck you, I'm not here to deal with your shit. If you're respectful towards me, either talk to me, or leave me the fuck alone. Because, to me, you're just there, you know, your scenery. Until we have a conversation, and I figure out whether or not you're worthy of me. If you call that narcissism, I don't care. If you think I'm a misandrist or a misogynist, I don't care. If you think I'm a racist, I don't care. Because you're wrong. And if you subscribe at this level, and you give me money, and you still think I'm a piece of shit, I'm still going to take your money. But if you're a piece of shit towards me, and you got to open your mouth, run your fucking mouth, and you're a piece of shit towards me, it doesn't really matter to me. I'll just block you to teach you a lesson. And then I'll make a video and say, this person was giving me $3 a month, and then they decided they wanted to disrespect me. This person gave me $15,000. And they decided they wanted to disrespect me. You know what I did? Well, as soon as I got that first payment, I banned them. And I told them that they're banned for a week or a month or whatever I felt like at the time. I'll make a public video, embarrass you, and then hopefully nobody will ever do it again. If you give me money, that doesn't mean I need to respect you. If you're respectful towards me, it means I need to respect you. Respect doesn't mean like. I mean, if you start in with, like, calling me names or talking about how I'm a bad person or you gaslight me, look up gaslighting phrases, the whole get therapy, get meds. If you ever open that shit with me and I block you, well, that's why, because I don't need the toxic bullshit. If you don't need the toxic bullshit from me, don't watch my fucking YouTube videos. Don't subscribe to me on Patreon. If you can handle it and you know it's not about you, then let's hang out sometime. If not, why the fuck would I hang out with you? You're just scenery. You're nothing to me. You are nothing. If you're in distress, I will help you. If you're having an argument with your boyfriend, though, that's not distress. You can figure that out. You're an adult. If somebody's like walloping on you or beating the hell out of you, then yeah, I'll probably call the police. Or try to get somebody to help. But if you're not in distress, I don't care. Just live your life. I don't see how that's so hard to understand. If you're sitting on the street and I give you food, eat the fucking food. Don't be stupid about it. Give it away if you don't like that an atheist helped you. If you don't want to be my friend, then don't fucking talk to me. If you want to thank me or say hi, that's fine. But if you're mean to me, I'm going to be mean to you. And if you're too much in my face, like we're standing in line and you're putting me on blast and talking shit, I got a phone in my fucking pocket. I'll deal with it the way I deal with it. If it's a problem for you, I don't care. Take it up with the police. I'm not dealing with your bullshit. If this offends you, again, this was about you. If this doesn't offend you, thank goodness you realize this is not about you. So, one night last week, I decided I wanted to give snacks to the homeless. I don't know, I'm bored, I got nothing else to do. It seems like everybody says if you want happiness in your life, you have to be kind to people, so... You know, I was given to the homeless a couple years ago, and then, like, people were making fun of me for some of the things I was saying on my notes. Uh, so I took a couple years off because the harassment online really got to me, and I ended up in a mental hospital for 10 months. Um, because of some of the uh, psychic abuse of people. Things like energy vampirism where they were just like sucking the life out of me you can look up energy vampire on google it's not an actual vampire it's just someone who is rude and never really lets up and tries to drain you of all energy 
And so I was suffering a lot of that and ended up in the hospital because it just it aggravated me. And I was getting loud because I was afraid. I was afraid they were going to try to make it impossible, impossible for me to ever find love. And they were out to kill me or hurt me. Uh, they made me paranoid. So I stopped giving to the homeless because I didn't really want to be out there uh, as much as I was. I still go out a lot and walk around day and night. Night and day. It doesn't really matter. Just different points in the day where I go for my walks. And people still talk shit. And I hear it. And it's not fun for me. They yell things that are obviously against me. Like, I was. Like, I'll show up in places when people start yelling things about me, and other people start laughing. Like, they think it's funny uh, to hear me being called a schizo. And to uh, have this look on my face like of abject fear. So I usually walk away. And people do that and they laugh. It's like I'm being bullied by everyone, it feels like. I don't really like it when people call me names. And I don't really like it when people laugh at me. So it just kind of feels like that. But I don't have a girlfriend because... Everybody seems to hate me no matter what the hell I do. Uh, so I decided to do good because I wanted happiness in my life again. And I'm only really happy, it seems, when I'm alone because when I'm around other people, it seems like I'm just like there for them and their entertainment. And I'm fine with that sometimes, but at the same time, I kind of feel like they're draining me of my energy. And provoking me to uh, hurt others and myself so I get away from that as much as possible so I don't hurt others and myself. I like to be alone most of the time. But at the same time I'm lonely and really, would really like a girlfriend because I haven't had one in eight years. And it just is a need that a other guy can't fulfill. Uh, it's a sexual need but it's also a companionship need. So I decided I wanted to help the homeless again because I wanted some happiness in my life. So one day I bought some candy because I, I bought some candy before and put it at the uh, apartment where I live just as a show of neighborliness. And then one dude here started like talking shit about how he hated me or something. Because I guess the YouTube channel got around. And he started hating me. It's like the women don't, but the guys do. And it's only like this one guy. But it was only one thing. He was like saying he hated me. They're like, like all these guys have, a lot of these guys are younger than me and have like young hot girlfriends that stop by all the time. And I just have to like ignore it. And it's like nobody cares about my feelings. And I don't talk to these women and I don't talk to any of these people here. But it's like I know what I know about telomeres and stuff and it just like it concerns me for the future uh, for the species and it concerns me, me for myself how easily these women are manipulated by misogynistic dudes or just any other dude other than me and it just feels like no matter what I do I'm never going to be good enough I know it's probably not true but I don't really want to overset my bounds but at the same time I'm a human being and a man and so I want happiness so I decided I wanted to give to the homeless more. Uh, so I walked around. I gave out some candy to one lady. Uh, city gate. I, I handed out like peanut packs one day. And I handed out uh, cocktail pet packs uh, one day. And popped uh, people on the street. Because I wanted to put joy into people's faces without really, you know, sticking around too long and having my energy drain which always seems to happen. Uh, so this chick, she messages me. Her name's Amber. She goes by the name of Violet Manic something in Spokane. She, she messaged me. She's got a boyfriend named Stuart Oliver. And I'm saying their names because of what they did. 
I suspect she might be on meth, so I don't really talk to her much. She messaged me thanking me for the candy and she wanted to like hook up and meet me. I said that was uncouth because she has a boyfriend and I didn't want to do that, yada yada. I showed her uh, my YouTube page, no response, sent her a friend request because she sent me a message. No friend request accepted, but she allowed me to follow, no blocking. Then her boyfriend messaged me today and like said that I'm a pervy pedophile and to stop hitting on his woman, basically. I was like, that wasn't my intent. I'm not, it, it's not my intent because I suspect that they're smoking meth and she's got a small kid. I don't really want to be a step-parent. And so he, he like uh, started ragging on me for being a pervert and called me a creep, which I hate, which is like... Like, my total pet peeve is anybody calling me names of a disparaging nature at all. I absolutely can't stand people like that. That have to call you an idiot or an asshole in order to be your friend or something. Uh, sure, I do it sometimes, but I'm never really specific about it. But, like, when somebody calls me a creep, I, my immediate nature is to say, Fuck you, and uh, say you're white trash. Which is usually what they are, is like white trash. And so, I didn't like that. I played it off sort of chill. I said, that wasn't my intent. I've, I've long said that I won't be into women under the age of 18. Um, I'm not chasing anybody under 18. And I tried to set his mind at ease. I showed him my Patreon link. And I said, I mean you no harm. But at the same time, I'm not friends with people who call me names and attack me. I have to block you. So I blocked him. After that, I contacted the Spokane Police Department. Because I suspect from a post on her page that she is a meth user and she has a small kid. I just sort of let it go at first when I saw this. The... The kid is like two or three years old, and she had a post about something to do with dope on her page that somebody posted, and it made me wonder, they look like meth users, like they're homeless, or partially homeless, and they've got like the sunken in facial features, like in the tattoos on the wrists, like indications that they're crystal meth users. You know me, when I suspect somebody's religious, I usually suspect that they're bad people anyway because of my history with them. It's so always like they're hiding something. But, uh, I don't know. He likes Marilyn Manson, so they might be atheists for all I care or know, or Satanists for all I care or know. But the fact is, is that they seemed like meth smokers. So I wrote a couple paragraphs to the Spokane Police Department and said that I was threatened and that I had no intention with her because I I suspected that she was on meth and that's not really my type of chick is a drug user this is from the cold outside it's like 20 degrees outside and I go and uh, uh, clear my throat a lot <clears throat> you know because it's like this it's, it's Spokane I used to be a smoker for 20 years Forgive me. Uh, and it's cold outside, so, you know, whatever. Uh, so I, I contacted the police because he was, he threatened me and they've got a small kid and he, it seems kind of stupid because I said that I wasn't interested at first. Like, she wanted to meet up with me, and I said, I'm not going to do that, you're in a relationship. But he still is suspicious of me for some reason, even though I already said it, that I wasn't interested because she was in a relationship. And it also seems that she's on drugs, too, so. Anyway, the police know about that now, because he was a dick to me. It's not made yet. <laughs>
today is the day before my 40th birthday. A gift uh, arrived from a friend from Instagram that sent me this uh, just because this person wanted to. It's like, you want to send me that? It's like, that's a $100 board game. And this person had already had sent me like $175 on PayPal when it was up. So I was like, you sure you want to send me that? It's a $100 board game. And this person... Uh, they were like, uh, well, it's only $88 on Amazon, so I graciously, graciously accepted. Uh, what I was sent was a feast for Odin. So I'm just going to open it. It's got like that nice, like the cafeteria uprising kind of board, uh, kind of like felty, kind of like box. I redid the Cafeteria Uprising, by the way. I'm, I'm actually trying to take it down to $80 with a turn track instead of the tokens. But I have an autographed copy that I'll sell for $1,000. I'll just buy one and autograph it that I'll keep with the original wood pieces. Because it's really kind of exquisitely made and I corrected the mistake on it. <clears throat> so, UA Rosenberg. He's for Odin, who also made Agricola uh, and some other important games that are, are escaping me now. I think he made... Well, I'm not going to say. I, I can't remember. But I remember looking him up the other day. I was like, why does that name sound familiar? Uwe Rosenberg. But he made Agricola, which I bought for my dad last year for his uh, birthday or his father's year or something. So he's made a couple of these games that are, like, hot within the board game community. And Feast for Odin is, is said to be his, uh, perhaps his best game, maybe even better than uh, Agricola. Oh, neat! So, uh, Rado, who does the uh, board game reviews on uh, YouTube, his copy had like the trays. And I was like, did he have to buy those? Because a lot of board game hobbyists will buy the trays because they don't come with the trays. But apparently this comes with the trays, you can see right here. I was not aware of that, that's pretty cool. This is my 40th birthday present. I bought myself Antiquity uh, back in October. Or maybe, yeah, it was, it was October or something, I don't remember. But this is my second this is, this is like one of those grail games. I might have to like put this up there with, uh, I don't know. This has to be displayed somewhere. I got some space on my dresser. So I'll probably put it over there. I got those up there. Those are some grail games. This might be a grail game. Oh yeah. <laughs> I see. I guess we can't open these yet. And this one. Oh. A doesn't have that. Do not open. So I guess I can't open C and B yet. It's got dice, but it's like not used all the time. You know, it's not like a major dice rolling game. It's high up there when it comes to strategy. If you're seeing this video, you pay $25. Uh, on Patreon a month in order to see it. Because I'm only charging for the videos. I'm charging for the videos now. I'm only gonna... There's a lot of haters on YouTube. It's like no matter what I post, there are a bunch of fucking douchebags towards me, so... I'm going straight to Patreon with all my videos, unless it's something important that I want to share with everybody. Nice board. These are all the things you can do. What? World book. This might be another language. Oh, the almanac of the game. Sleeves. I'll probably go into something a little more complete at another time. 
these boards. You're either my stepdad in viewing this because I'll probably send him this video. It's unlisted on YouTube, so if you have the URL, of course, you can pass it around to others, but you have to pay $25 a month to watch my videos now. It does seem strange to me that there's a cross, but it's a Celtic cross on a Norse game about a Norse god, a Christian symbol. I don't know. I'll have to read what the story is behind all that. So I'm not really too worried about it because nobody's a patron at this level yet. Excuse me. I just had some red rubber. Occasionally I get some money from some strange sources. So. And I have strange ways of collecting that money that I don't need to talk about right now. It's called, they send it to me in the mail. Because my PayPal account got deleted. I was trying to run a lottery. I pay $5 and you can win 100000 And they didn't like that. So I have to start a new PayPal account and I'm gonna keep that secret. Or maybe I'll just do Patreon. But I'll probably just use the uh, PayPal account for uh, my purchases on Amazon and the Game Crafter and with my buying of the art because I'm trying to get more money to uh, buy more games uh, and, and to build more games because the games I want to build would be rather expensive. That's why I'm charging so much for the uh, Instagram, or I'm sorry, the Patreon. But I'll send this to my parents. I'll probably send this to my dad too. Yesterday he was, uh, yeah, uh, he had his 68th birthday. So I'm just showing him what a friend of mine got me for my birthday. So we have a feast for Odin which is about $88 on Instagram. Hope you enjoyed this video. It's gotten kind of scruffy because it's got some play on it. I'm gonna play this A to B. See, my theory is that you go as far away as you can because some of those can be some big booms. Gonna put over there. Keys, personally, I don't like them. I can see how people can like them. It adds a gambling element. Good work, you know. If you want like bigger PTSV. PTSV, you can't really see it well. It's blurry. Or was I? A B A B C B drew that, can't use it. Can't use that. We're just gonna play to the first capture. Food can't move on its own. No, uh, you know, I'm gonna put one on.
B. Can't use it. Can use that. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven turns. We haven't just moved independently yet. Can't use that because B's turn. See what I'm doing is just drawing out of this bag. No peak. Kind of just spacing them out so we can move. See that? Cut off. But that one's good. We can move four. One, two, three, four. Or one, two, three, four. Any direction. Just gonna do that. It seems like a lot, but it does speed it along, and this will probably end up being a uh, three capture kind of game in 60 turns. Maybe six. Is doing quite a bit better than B did right here, and also quite a bit better on the uh, other one that I played by myself. I'm playing as A and B. I could play it like where I'm B, but then, you know, how would I determine how to attack myself? B just drew an awesome card. That's going to protect the line. One, two, three, four, five. We'll put that right there. Ideally, you want one right up here, too. You can skinny through it. Uh-oh. A is going to move up again. What was it? Four? One, two, three, four. Right there. doesn't much matter right now because that teacher's right in the way. B got one. Anybody can move the teacher. Wait, do we want that on there? Yes, we do. Soup's the best one. It's the most powerful. You know, everything. In fact, that is the most powerful chit in the game, the 3-3-3-3. Can't believe I drew that. I've been looking for that one. The lowest is 1-1-1-1 and the highest is 3-3-3-3. 1-1-1-1 is a beef. So, we're going to move this as Team A. The teachers can only move orthogonal and diagonal. One, two, three, four, five. So B is going to attack, I think. Movement three. Four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two. Oh, can't make it. So, B is going to draw. Another damn key. Those could come into play if you really want them to. Uh, 
A is going to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. One, two, yeah, that one's dead. And also this food is spent. So that was one turn, then we had two others where we just moved, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 14 moves, maybe, and we just captured one, you go up to 60, that took probably 14 minutes, uh, it took 8, 8 minutes, so I would say 8 to 10 Maybe a half hour game. That could be a lot better. So that's the gist of Cafeteria Uprising. Just take these. I could do a whole game. That'd probably be a half hour. I don't know, tell me your thoughts. I don't want to hear if you hate it, of course, but, you know, you guys are dickheads, so what are you going to do? I'd like to hear if you like it, really. I don't really want to hear from the dickheads. They just say the same things over and over again. People that like it are actually creative and have intelligence. There's people that like it. Believe it or not, you Nazi fucks. Okay. I just want to go over a little bit about how deconversion is played and maybe kind of play those out. Um, the first part is, well, setting all this stuff up. One side's Gollum, one side's um, Ogre. It doesn't really matter. You have six lives each. Of course, one's bigger than the other. It's kind of meant to, I'm going to say, reflect the asymmetry, uh, asymmetry of the game. But I might actually change that in the sale version of deconversion. So uh, both the meeples are the same size, even though it could be a reference to the asymmetry, as you'll see. Uh, you don't want to fill in the GAS because that happens each time you go to money. It's really just there to mark if you want to, uh, to remember how it was on your last money pickup. So you have the die. And you roll it. And that's a six. So let's say green goes first and then they fill in. Six. Um, it doesn't really matter whose side's uh, uh, white and whose side is black, but it should be set up in this this pattern: the GAS first, and then the uh, rest of the one-letter ones, and then the two-letter ones. The two-letter ones are the attacks that you can buy, and there's eight of those, and then there's nine of the ones that aren't gas. Gas is a reference to Pink Floyd, money is a gas. Um, the GAS stands for Glimmer Asset and Security. And we can get back on that later. So, you know, Red would roll the die and do the same thing with his F. He rolls a 5. And you want to do this before the game starts for all 20 of the values, which you change up every six turns. So here's the the playing board. I mean you look at it and you think, well, that'll be easy for me to get down. Really? Because in order to attack them you have to have a length of message and also a uh, attack on the front of that. So if your message is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, if you wanted to travel that way, or 5, I mean, you wanted to travel that way, you can travel many different ways. 
um, you have to do your message from this point. And it might be like you can attack the two vertical and horizontal, or the one horizontal and the one vertical. So you could attack here and you could attack here. But the diagonals are the four on the side, so horizontal and then, well, I guess any one of those. Sorry about that. If your attack is horizontal, it could be any one of those, or any one of those, or any, or horizontal would be that one and that one. So the vertical would be either that one or that one, and the diagonals would be one, two, three, four. So there's some overlap there in uh, what you can attack with that attack, but I think that's all right. To start out, you want to put the money on the bullseye. And although I have the food, the energy out on the perimeter, it doesn't have to be on the perimeter. It could be like, you know, right there. And you want to try to not knock this board too much. Because it'll get disorganized and it'll be hard to know where to go. So, he's a little bigger than that, but the spaces are the one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the seventh in the middle. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it's really easy to figure it out once you figure it out. It's not marked out by lines. It's marked out by the three sides of a hexagon. And we can see that uh, this takes a lot of table space to set up. But it doesn't take too much table space to set up. Uh, those red ones, those are life markers and then the, the, the bars are your turns. And I've gone over that in a, another video, previous. Um, so, the message is basically just a length. Uh, horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. If I'm not mistaken. Let me look at the rules. Yeah, it's just horizontal or vertical, which means spaces on this kind of board with the 18 point or the 18 uh, side board. It's just how many spaces you want to travel. You can travel this way or this way or any way you really want. So the attacks. The attacks, there's eight of them. Let's see. Wind up to two mats away, horizontal or vertical to an unoccupied area. See, I had to change that. I actually messed up when I was making the rules. Uh, so, I had to go and change that. And now the wind is up to one away, horizontal or vertical. The heat attack is same as wind, but four diagonals, one mat away. Odor is any perimeter of a mat, one horizontal or vertical away. So the entire perimeter, like if you go up to here, one away would be there. You go up to here, and one away. This entire mat, except for the bullseye, would be a hittable spot. And I came to a spot where I was testing it out on the game room at, at the Spokane Community College. And I had enough money for all the attacks, but I couldn't make the attacks even though I was pretty close. But previously, my other player, this guy, could make the attack, so I made the attack with him, and I couldn't with him. So it gets to that point sometimes where you can't make an attack, even if you can afford it. Uh, the barometer, entire structure, perimeter, like the entire structure, the whole perimeter of the entire thing can be attacked. But not these two, and not spaces in the middle, and not bullseyes. Noise, one or two spaces away from your message would be one, two. Like the message ends here because you have a message of length of six. So you can go from one to six with your message. And then right here would be one or two, or one or two. 
but that would also be one. So it's one or two away. Radiation is the same except they can go up to three. And when I say that, I mean that you can go one, two, or three. Just because you have a six on your attribute of maybe uh, your respect, which is your movement length, horizontal or diagonal, in other words, space to space on this kind of modular board, even if your respect is six, you can travel five. You can't travel seven. Um, see, the money is actually your logic, too. Uh, your logic is L, and your faith is F. Logic is your offensive, and faith is your defensive. And you want your logic to be greater than their faith. And you might look, and it's like, well, they have a faith of six, and I got a logic of one. What do I got to do to get up to that point where six minus six equals zero? Well, you collect money on the board, and you roll for the value. Like, let's say... The glimmer on this, I don't know, but the understanding I have of it is a five. So I roll in each turn. This counts as a turn. That's a four. There's my turn. But let's say I roll a five, and that means I can pick it up. But wait, there's one more thing you got to do. Two. It's worth two. So you write down two on your piece of paper. The one of your dollar bills is worth two. The rest of them, the five right here, they're worth one. And it's pretty easy to keep track of. You just write two on a piece of paper. You know that one of those bills is worth two. You can write a slash uh, or like a slash slash for two after it to denote that two of your bills. You know, however you want to do it. After each turn, you remove one block away. If you die, you remove one life. Your character doesn't move. Uh, but when you attack somebody... You stay there, and then the next turn, you can't attack that person again. So, uh, you also get a die roll, which in this case is a 1, and let's say your respect is 6, that means you can move 7 away. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, which might actually bring you closer. So you might want to skip that. But if you're like, if he's like right here, and he attacks you and you're over here, that little difference, that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you might just want to move two or three. I guess that would be five, four, five. So you're not too close to them, and you can attack in that turn, but they can't attack you in that turn. And after you use an attack, you flip it over and remove all the little pips on it. And you can only attack eight times within six turns. After that sixth turn, of course you won't be able to because each turn, each attack is a turn. But you, um, you can only use your uh, attacks once in that sixth turn phase. And then after that, you change out. You don't have to wipe off the entire thing of the pips. You just change out the ones that you need or don't need so that you have their proper amount for th this phase and, and then your life you know stays you know what it was and your bars go back to normal another thing about the game is you have a desire a d value and that d value is how many tokens right along with you that are black and what that denotes is how long you can stay on one map like, he could stay there and roll, you know, four times for that dollar, or do whatever the hell he wants, try to attack, wait for you to get closer, whatever he wants to do. But you can only stay four turns according to your desire. And then you automatically have to move to an adjacent map, anyone you want. As long as the space is unoccupied. There's seven spaces per map, and ten mats. It looks small, but it's actually rather big. Like, moving too far... Is, is completely possible because if you move too far you could be within range and or you can be out of range for attacking which isn't good um, when you collect an energy you uh, this one is worth three that means all your values go up to three and all the, the your uh, your product costs your attack costs go down three so if your attack is 
one and it goes down three, of course it's going to cost you zero. So it costs you zero to make that attack. And you have your, uh, your dollars that you collect, and there's 50 of them in the bag. There's five, ten, twenty right here. That means there's thirty more. So you uh, use the money for a couple different things. Uh, another thing that you can roll for is your security once you get a dollar bill. You just go back onto the bullseye and stay there. You roll your security. That's five. That means if it takes um, with, your, with his message and his attack uh, five to reach you it actually costs it actually takes him ten because you rolled a five and that only lasts for one turn or well that, that I think it it's you it lasts as long as you're on the bullseye but you know there's a limited amount of time that you can be on that bullseye because there's a limited time you can be on the map I haven't gone over the rules uh, since I bought the game I, I've gone over and I've corrected some things here and there but I don't have them all memorized. So I've gone over the rules, I just don't have them committed to memory yet. Uh, so that the white indicates how long you can keep your energy. The, the three up, the two up, or the one up. This is a two, this is soda. Uh, popcorn is worth one. Or no, it's worth two. Soda's worth one, I'm sorry. But you have a stack of white ones and that denotes how long after a turn of not using it or a turn of having it because you could use it twice if you want a turn of and then two um, but that this would actually only be one we know it'd be two it's one above what they're worth so that would be you can keep that for two turns but you can keep the popcorn for three turns and you can keep the uh, hot dog for four turns and you only have four each that you can use. So if you're using the hot dog one, you can't get any more energy because you can't keep them for any more turns because you got all your white use. After your energy starts to run out, oh, two, I, that means I can get a pop if I want to and use that energy for two turns. So it's pretty handy to have. It knocks the attack crossed down and it, it makes everything else more powerful. Of course, it ups your understanding, so you got to remember that your understanding number would be whatever it is. Five, it could go up to like six. And the last thing you want to do in your turn is you want to draw something from the blue bag. You draw a purple and they draw blue. That means nothing. It goes back in the bag. But if uh, they drew a purple too. Boom. That means that you take your E value, your eloquence, and you pay them that much money. Right now I don't have that set up, but let's say it was a four for eloquence. That means that I would be able to pay you four and you wouldn't be able to attack me. And if uh, you can't attack me at all because you attacked in the previous turn, that means two turns you can't attack me. These are known as worker discs. Oops. So there's three bags, one filled with money. That's every money is the same. Um, the other one is filled with energy. All, after all the money is run out on the board, you can replace it with more money until there's no more money. Um, which means you can replace it three more times. Four phases. And you don't have to uh, deplete all your... Uh, well, it goes to six, so there's no real time limit on the game. Uh, the only time limit is how many you can capture of the other guy. And I played, and I set it up, and I played a little bit by myself as a newbie, and even forgot the worker chits, and it took me 80 minutes. So, like, maybe half that is playtime. So, 40 to 45 minutes for a phase, and one capture in that phase could be, like, four and a half hours, if my math is right. 
So this is potentially a four to six hour game. I think there's anything else. I don't think that's it. I think that's pretty much covered it. If you if you your respect is six, you can move five. You know your movement. You wouldn't really want to do that with your logic and power or your logic and uh, faith. Uh, maybe I can go over what each of the letters stand for. I'm not gonna really go too far into it. Uh, faith. Defensive number, logic, offensive number, understanding must match the glimmer of the hologram on the bill, which is, you know, it's just virtually there. It's not really there. The hologram is essentially the dollar sign. Nonchalance, maybe pay this amount to offender in an attack to prevent offense one time in a six turn cycle. Flip over card after removing coins once used. Patience, the same thing except for defense. Uh, respect is your movement message, how far away you can preach from with your logic to reach the opponent, faith, and distance. Eloquence, the ability to negotiate, desire how long you can stay on the mat, glimmer, asset, security, we went over that. So, again, if you're, uh, you can move and you can attack in the same turn. So you can do a respect and you can do a logic in the same turn. Like you might want to move here and then you do your logic but first you got to do your message so your message is maybe one over on a reaches you one over one over you're not moving in there you're just you know virtually shouting in there your message until he gets it which is six turns or not turns but six uh well it is six turns it's uh, six um attacks the reason why I did that is I just wanted everything in the game to be six because of everything in the game being six for like that whole thing. Uh, so from the point of the message ending, if it's like a six, one, two, three, four, five, six, then you got to go to adjacent mat or an adjacent mat. You can't do on this mat. You can't use that attack. But maybe you could use the perimeter attack and attack all the perimeter. And you get him one time and again you track it with the meeples and it really does take a while to learn how to play and do it correctly I would think like two games before you'd really not have to check the rules uh, get that memorized maybe even three or four but um, my parents probably have meeple toss memorized because of them playing it so much I love that my niece, who's like 21, loves the game. That's awesome. And this, is for, this isn't for sale on the Game Crafter yet. It will be in a couple of weeks. What's for sale on the Game Crafter is Cafeteria Uprising, which I've gone over and over again. Um, a lot of people seem to want it, so I'm waiting to see if they'll sell. I don't know, maybe they will, maybe they won't. We'll see. And you know it's me because of the Batman pants that I wear half the time.
Maybe if I was misogynistic, I'd be getting laid. It seems to me like you've never observed the behavior of the men that do get laid, especially in Spokane, Washington, a conservative area. These dudes are out there calling women bitches all the time, and they're getting laid. You've only chosen to pick on me because I'm poor. You're a classist. And your opinion as a bigot means to me exactly zero. You aren't necessarily responsible for the abuse you receive, but you are responsible if you don't do something to try to stop it if you can. So I'm going to be moving to Patreon exclusive for $15 a month. You can watch my videos. I don't really like being abused, and I don't like returning the abuse with more abuse, which isolates more people. I don't really like being at that level. So I'm going to go to a $15 a month tier to try to cut this down. Because it's your fault you're doing this. You're doing it because you don't want this stuff that I talk about to be true. Which it is. And if it wasn't, you wouldn't be attacking me. Okay. This is actually a pretty good brandy. It's low shelf. It's $12. But I think next month I'm going to move up to a more expensive brand. Bro. It's hard to know what to do with my hair. I want to get it long enough to like tie in a ponytail. But it's not quite that long yet. These be a couple more inches longer, maybe a couple more months. Maybe in the spring I can start doing that. And then like scooping it back like this. So it doesn't look like a mullet. We're in the NASA shirt again. I just did two big bags of laundry tonight. I went to the blessings of the bridge. This guy and his girlfriend recognized this man and he's like, we need more like we need like ten Lucases. He was saying, yeah, I remember when they were calling you a pedophile and you discovered this chemical or something. Like, well, I didn't discover it, but I linked it to uh, women between 18 and 24 for creating the strongest DNA in children if you're in this middle-aged window when you're a man. And they were talking about that. He was saying that I was like a local celebrity to his friends and that I was like royalty. I'm just there in the line at Blessings Under the Bridge going... Then I got my food, sat down and ate that. They gave me a whole bunch of stuff. I already have a toothpaste, so they gave me another toothpaste. I guess I have two toothpastes now. Uh, I got like a 2X shirt and like a hat and some cookies and oranges, like little satsumas. I'm just going to give this bag to somebody homeless tonight. It's December 4, 2019. It's not really a whole bunch of stuff. It's like toiletries and things, like deodorant and stuff. I don't really need any of that because I got a bunch of stuff. I got a bunch of deodorant, a bunch of body wash. I don't need the shampoo. I don't really use hand sanitizer. If I do it, I already have one. So I'm just going to run this to a homeless guy. If I see one down there, or person. Of course, you probably won't be watching these videos for a while because they're at the $15 level. And you have to pay. That's what I got for pot for the rest of December. It's not much. About an eighth a couple days ago. This is 80% indica, 20% sativa, it's called Purple Punch, it's not bad. I don't think anything else is really going on right now. It's my younger brother's birthday today, he's 38. 
I haven't talked to him in like seven years. I've tried, he just hasn't replied. He's really busy. I don't know. I don't know how my family thinks of me. If you want to be one of those lucky few that put it into my Patreon account, we got three subscribers. Come to my Instagram account. And you could buy me delicious dinners in under 30 seconds. My goodness, what even was that? It was like guacamole and chips with cheese. You sent me some money on Patreon by meeting me up on Instagram. Man, that dinner tonight, I don't even know what that was. That was just like something else. That wasn't the tacos that I had for lunch. This is something else entirely. If you want to put money in my Patreon account, come see me on Instagram and you can fill me up. It was something else. It was something uh, delicious. The one rule for this page is if you show me any kind of disrespect, I'm blocking you. That includes name calling. If you were my girlfriend and we both supported Bernie Sanders, it would show that love transcends capitalism. Not only that, if we got 500 patrons on Patreon, we'd be making $90,000 a year. If we got 1,000 at the $15 level, we'd be making $180,000 a year. Just throwing it out there. I hate doing this, but it's like if I don't do this at least once, you're not going to give up my nuts. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Let's go give this cat some skin.
Thanksgiving. The fact of the matter is that you're a bigot. <clears throat> you won't date me either because I don't have enough money, I have bipolar, or you're an age phobe. Which is why I have to talk about the things that I talk about. Otherwise, assholes like you are just going to get away with being assholes. Am I a bigot? Well, I don't know. Read my Twitter. Isn't there a lot of pro-feminist shit compared to the dudes you normally fuck? Uh, shut your fucking mouth, bigot. Of course, if you were not a bigot, you wouldn't have to deal with me calling you a bigot. But if you're a bigot, you're a bigot, and I hate you. If you're not a bigot, you don't have to worry about it. You're not who I'm talking about. If you think this is about you, then it's about you. If it's not about you, then it's not about you. I don't see why you would be worried about it. Maybe you're a weightist. I've had crushes on black chicks. I've had crushes on skinny girls and heavier girls. I've had dates with Generation X, my own generation. I've had dates with a baby boomer. I haven't had dates with millennials because seemingly you're all bigots. Somehow, some way, you're all bigots. I haven't dated a Zoomer because somehow, some way, it seems like you're all bigots. I'm not saying you are. But it seems to me like you are. Classist, weightist, age-phobic, ableist. Ist, 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 ist. Anti-atheist, ist. You're a bigot. If you're not a bigot, I don't see why you're worried about it. Because this self that I'm presenting to you is not the self that you would get. Since you're not a bigot. If you subscribe to this level, you wouldn't be a bigot because you would have been non-bigoted enough to at least give me $15 a month. Maybe even more than that. I don't care if you're a disrespectful, hateful, asshole of a person. But if you're disrespectful towards me, I don't see why we're hanging out or being friends. I don't see why I have to respect you if you disrespect me. I don't see why if you give me a million dollars, why I would need to respect you if you disrespect me. Shut up, sit your clown ass down. If this applies to you, it applies to you. But that's up to you. If you feel that it applies to you, then it applies to you. If you feel like this doesn't apply to you, one, present evidence. Two, you'd respect me. You wouldn't use blanket statements. You wouldn't do the ad hominem you two arguments against me. You would just be like, I understand there's some mean ass people that turn us into meaner people when we're around them. You would understand that because you'd be empathic enough to know the difference between what I'm talking about, who I'm talking about, and yourself. My fear is if you're a Zoomer and we hang out and you have a girl there, any girl, wife, girlfriends, or friends, I would have to tell them the stuff 
about telomeres. But I mean, if you were my friend, you would have already told them that. And they would already know that. And we could all hang out live and they could ask questions. I don't see why you would be asking me questions. If I've already answered your questions over Instagram, then there's no point in asking the questions anymore. If you're a chick and you want to ask the questions, well, that's fine. I would prefer that I know that you're a legitimate person into me in the first place. If you're not into me, I expect not to get a video from you. If you're into me, I expect to get a video. After being catfished seven times, fuck you. Again, if this doesn't apply to you, then you wouldn't have hurt feelings about it. If it applies to you, you would have hurt feelings about it. I realize when you look into my eyes, you see the devil. An atheist, anti-theist. One among many amongst the scientific community. You said no to me. You said that you were interested. You were a girl. You were of legal age. <clears throat> and you said you weren't interested. You're a Christian. You follow love thy neighbor and love thy enemy. Like, I follow republicanism and want to become Trump, which is not at all. <clears throat> but that's the thing. If I'm not your priority, I'm not your option. It's an ocean out there. There are plenty of fish in the sea. I'm not worried about it. Just go and live your life. But when you go outside, the next time you go outside at night, I want you to look into the night sky when the stars are shining, and I want you to notice the spaces between the stars. And I want you to realize that there's a pattern here. It's not necessarily about space, it's about time. There's stars, there's planets, there's moons, there's asteroids, there's planetoids, there's galactic clouds bigger than anything you've ever seen or been involved with. There are nebulae, there are galaxies, there are superclusters. These aren't just differences in space and differences in size and differences in shape and color. These are differences in time. The universe has an intergenerational pattern. So when I tell you the older men confer greater health in the children as fathers, which is confirmed by the behavior of us through beetle studies as compared to human studies as far back as 2013, as far back as 2015, Cambridge and the University of Zurich say that younger men confer weaker DNA in their children. <clears throat> Teenage fathers, bad. But we know the oocytes that develop into eggs are healthiest between the ages of 18 and 24. Since 2012, to 2019, this year. Two days before my 40th birthday, in my eighth year of being single, 140 pounds lost. Improved behavior, where now everybody thinks I'm a Christian. If you see a misogynist when you're looking in these eyes, 
You're not looking at me these eyes. You're looking at yourself. You're seeing religion and cultural conformity and the patriarchy telling you that I'm the bad guy. You're seeing religion. You're seeing your own hate at yourself. When you're calling me an idiot, you're talking to yourself. When you're calling me a misogynist, you're calling yourself a misogynist. I agree with you. There's a lot of misogyny in this world. <clears throat> but the misogynists are the accepted men. For the most part, the religious, the Christians, the typical male, the football players, the jocks, the politicians, the men in power, the CEOs, the billions of dollars that control your viewpoint through television, radio, and the internet. These are the misogynists. These are the narcissists. When you look at me, if you see the devil, you're seeing yourself. When you look at me, you see a Christian woman. But when you look at me, you see an anti-theist man. Look at the spaces. Look at the time periods in which existence popped into existence. Things, atoms, molecules, stars, galaxies, quantum fluctuations, alpha radiation. All these things occurred at different points in time. The universe has an intergenerational pattern. So when they say that women between the ages of 18 and 24 are the most fertile, and you know that young women are the most fertile, and I say that older men are the most fertile between the ages of the late 30s and early 50s, as confirmed by Dan Eisenberg, of the University of Washington since 2012 to 2019. Chris Kazawa from the Northwestern University, Neveston, Illinois. If you want a Christian woman, what you got to do is practice self-abdication eternally. But if you want an atheist chick, you have to believe in yourself, they say. No. What you need is doubt. Doubt is my friend. Self-doubt, doubt of others, doubt of all claims, including the paternal aging effect of 1912. Doubt that I'm a massagist, doubt that I'm a narcissist, doubt that I'm an empath. All these things I doubt. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have this face if I had belief. You know the stares of the Nazis, the blank stares as they proclaim themselves to be hypocrites and, and misogynists, which gets them laid by yaha young Christian chicks. You know this. You know the racist look. You know the homophobic look. You know the blank stare of the conservative Christian. What you see is me. I am not a misogynist. Many of my friends belong to the gay community and are lesbians. You insult them when you insult me. But the universe has an intergenerational pattern. If you want evidence, watch my videos. I'm not playing around here. You are. But I don't mind if you laugh. Because I'm a funny guy. But I'm a seriously funny guy. If you embrace violence, you are a child. If you don't embrace the fact that you might have some hypocritical tendencies. If you don't see the fact that I've worked on my hypocritical tendencies for a long time. For 40 years. And you come at me with ad hominem attacks, you're not my chick. Because when I see an atheist, I see joy and kindness and respect. When I see an anti-theist, I see someone who is the same as an atheist, but demands evidence in all things. I see a like mind. Demand evidence in all things. And leave the ad hominem attacks alone, or you're going to get what you give. Didn't Christ say that? You will reap what you sow, said the Bible. Didn't the Jews say that? Anything you give me, I'm going to give you back in spades. So if you tear into me, I'm going to tear into you. And it's going to be even harsher. If you're a hate watcher, watch out. Because within public community, stopping you is as easy 
as my doubt. Call me a schizo, I'll call you white trash. Call me anything, I'll just say no. Incorrect. Say I'm Hitler, I'll call you an age phobe. It doesn't matter to me. Whatever you give me, I will give you back. Many fold. If I'm a misogynist, you need to explain my support of Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and Andrew Yang because these men want, want women to be in power more often. How would I know about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Ilhan Omar? How would I know about Ayan Hersey Ali? Do you know these women? No, you do not. Would these women call me a misogynist? No, they would not. Come down to earth. Watch my Facebook, Olympia Atheist. I won't accept your friend request unless we have mutual friends. If I suspect you of trolling me, I'm going to send you to my Patreon. Pay me to believe you. I still won't believe you, but at least I'll have your money. Patreon.com slash the worm. Most of my friends are women. Most of my friends wouldn't say that I am a misogynist. Otherwise, why would they be my friends? It's like you're crying when you should be laughing. But if I inspired you, at least I'm happy. Hit that like, subscribe, and just know that if you deny me, I'm walking away. Because I'm not here to be an option. I'm here to be a priority because that's self-respect and I showed you more respect than any Christian would or could. You're black, maybe, and your boyfriend is white and he called me the N-word. Check that British fool. He's not who you think he is. You want the devil? Look into the eyes of a Christian.